adding the Caroline B, <laughs> but most times I call her Mrs. Me. Uh, we are originally we're from Uganda, and uh, when I reached Zambia, they gave me a new name, Biso, they added the Za, so it's Bisonga. The Kaondes are the one who gave me that name. Um, first of all, I will um, give a brief history of how I met Caroline. One day I visited a church. It was a college church in Uganda. And um, that was Makere University. When I visited that college church, this lady was giving a testimony of how the Lord had been good to her, how he's taken her through university. And now that year she was graduating. And I spotted her. I liked the way she was talking, the way she was bringing out the words. I was like, okay. Uh, but I didn't know her, so I quickly made a move to bring her close to myself so I can get to know her. Uh, initially, my, my intention was to bring her close so I can know her. So I went over to her and I asked if um, she had a job. By then I was uh, working with a company and I was in a position whereby um, I was assisting the human resource department in uh, attracting some people into the company and I attracted her to join our company <laughs> and uh, that's how she came and uh, she was posted in a different branch uh, from the one I was working so but every morning I used to have a chance to go through their branch if I could go to my branch. And basically, that's a brief history of how I came to know her. And uh, yes, along the way, uh, it wasn't as easy as it is sounding here in a few words. Because I worked with this lady for like two years and I had not made a real move because she wasn't easy to get because she didn't have a phone I couldn't call her after work most of the time she was my junior uh, I didn't want to be caught off guard and our company had a policy you could not go out with your workmate and uh, I remember one time I was posted to another country and uh, I sent her a message and that's when she said we will miss you from that moment, that is how the whole fire ignited, and I knew what I intended to also intend it. And yes. Mm. yes, we got married in November 2007, and it's been a handful of six years, quite exciting. Our dating time was really very exciting. Because like as I mentioned, uh, we started dating and we, want, we wanted to keep it away from the rest of the other staff members that were going out together. I remember one day we organized the date and uh, we went out in this uh, restaurant. Little did we know that one of 
our workmates also had, had a date in the same restaurant. So we bumped into each other and um, it was exciting that we had to come out in the open and say anyway, we are seeing each other. But it was very interesting. Then the other interesting moment was um, our wedding preparation. Uh, I remember we chose a wedding day which coincided with uh, the visiting of the Queen from England because by then it was a Choga meeting in 2007 and it was being hosted in Uganda. So everyone said it's impossible because um, the wedding day was going to be the actual day of the meeting and all half of the roads in the city were closed everyone was like ah you know change the date and all that i remember we stood and said you know what we're not going to change our date and we're going to make it simple and we're going to make it exciting and exactly that's how our wedding was very simple very exciting and everything turned out to our expectations that was a very exciting moment for us yeah. uh, along the way i think the most difficult time would be first of all um, I think two years after our wedding, we were expecting a baby. And, uh, I think the pregnancy had to be somewhere to up to six months. And my wife kept having high blood pressure. And what really became very hard, first of all, we would go to the clinic, because like every single day we would go to the clinic and uh, the doctors would try to find out what is the cause of the high blood pressure. They couldn't find out, they were like, maybe because of a new couple, it could be maybe stressing each other. And for us at home, we're stressed. Everything was okay. We're still on our honeymoon. But the pressures kept going up until one time, the, uh, one of the doctors discovered actually that uh, uh, if we do not terminate that pregnancy, um, my wife plus the baby were in great danger. So what was very difficult, especially for me, was they asked me to sign a paper to terminate a pregnancy. First of all, being a child of God, I'm a firm believer, I kept on praying, I kept on believing, you know, God to come through, especially to come through my way, my style. So uh, I refused to sign. I remember I put talk time about to 100 questions. And I tried try to call Africa, the doctors I knew there, they told me, well, if the doctors advise that, that's the way we treat that condition. I had a friend, doctor in the UK, I called the UK, they told me the same thing. I went literally to UTH, I consulted all the doctors, they told me, well, mo normally that's how we treat that kind of a condition. So it was very difficult, but I remember, mm, after praying and consulting my wife, she said, let's go ahead and sign that, and I signed that document. But that was not very easy for me. So no one would imagine that I had pressure. So now we get married and every time I tell back my friend me, I'm not going this side, I'm not going this side, I have a headache, I think it's my baby. We go to the clinic and they tell us, no, I think you're stressed since you're nervous. Okay? So we tried going out, watching movies, they get everything. When I got pregnant, the pressure, I mean, it just increased. Okay? So I suffered from severe preeclampsia and my kidneys were not functioning. I don't know if I deliver the baby, okay? The pressure would go down and the kidneys would start working. But the pressure didn't go down. Even after the baby. So they, my kidneys shrunk. I would be driving at, as in practically my feet, I don't feel my feet, so I couldn't, you know, step on the pedals and I'm in the middle of the road. So I told Badra, hey, why don't you just take me to the clinic? And they told me, hey, your kidneys are okay. good. So that was really tough. Um, they had to insert a tube in me and remove that blood, clean it, put it back in. It wasn't easy. The one called dialysis. 
that's dialysis. It, it, it was not easy. It was tough. Okay. Um, we lived in Dinam. Of course, had we, had we gone for the transplant, had we decided? The year before, probably yeah. maybe we wouldn't have but spent the hundred dollars per day. Another thing is that we also had to stop this. Some people would come to me and tell me, what did you do? Hmm? How come we are praying and you're not getting here? Yeah. You know, we had <laughs> <You're making laughs> So, I had to stop listening to people. I loved them, but I had to stop listening to people and start listening to Badu. Badu told me we are going up that hill, like Abraham went up with his son, and God will provide. God will make a way. So I decided to listen to whatever was telling me. We started fundraising, okay, and somehow God started working. It's really important to be open when you go to pray. Okay, there's no sickness that, I mean, I don't know. God doesn't stop loving us because I don't know what we do. Okay, He loves us anyway. It's the same thing. God loves me in all my thoughts. You know, big, small, I don't know. It's the only thing I can do. So many things I don't even remember. How it was before we got to my So, I think he has Christ in me. No, I know. I know he has Christ. It wasn't easy. I remember us fundraising. We used to get practically coins. So that is why it's a mirror. Coins. And there's a time when this musician went singing, getting money, and one of the guys was like, who's that crazy guy giving the wife a kidney? I have the money here, but I'm not giving it to you. What has she given to you? And Bart was there. Okay? But he stood. He stood. So that is why I just don't understand. But it's also important to people to know that it's okay, you can live with one kid. Okay? Uh, relatives, friends should be able to give. Okay? Freely. God will, I mean, some of us have one kidney. Some of you guys have one kidney and you don't even care. Okay? So it is important to go for medical checkups. I don't want for medical checkup. Maybe it wouldn't have gone for that. But God knows whatever is going to happen and we should always submit to this. It's important. There's another couple who asked about so is it important for us to first go and take our, what, our mates for a proper checkup before we get married? My friend, I don't think that is right. <laughs> I don't think that is right really. If you've chosen to love someone, love them. Love is not a feeling, okay? Love is, what is it, a commitment? You just have to love. And sometimes when you don't feel like loving, it's important to think about what people, your parents, the people who came to honor your day, will think. I know they say that don't, don't care about what other people think about you, but sometimes that is what you need to keep going for that day. What will people think if I decided to leave this day? Okay? Then the next day God will give you your daily bread. So, so many decisions have to be made. In and out of hospitals, I put injections. Um, seeing my husband sleep under my bed in hospital, then leave and go to work and come back at night, you know. Oh. Praying and expecting something, and then you get something else. Okay, it was kind of hard. Um, I gave my life to Christ when I was 13 years, and I've been seeing breakthroughs. When they told me your kidneys are gone, I laughed at that doctor. I was like, I know my God, you'll see me through this. They are not. So we lived in denial. Praying, believing, I remember God was giving a testimony in church. She's not going for a transplant. <laughs> and he had to take back those words. But um, it was trying, but at the same time, fun. Because um, I remember Badu leaving me with a car and telling me, when you feel okay, you come to town, we go out for a cup of tea, black tea. So it was fun because um, I loved having him there, you know. He chose to leave, okay? No matter what we were going through, 
their time zone would really help us laugh in the midst of all the pain as in sincere laughter, deep laughter. I think um, I loved the whole process. Like, I did. It was hard, but at the same time it was so I can only give glory to God. And um, another time was when my doctor looked at me and said, do you have <laughs> any friends in your family? I have seven brothers. Because you're going to need them. Being the firstborn sincerely, <laughs> going to my brothers and telling them, give me your organ. It was tough. I didn't know which brother to look at and ask. I didn't want to endanger them. That was tough. It was really tough. But then God sent this man. He was always willing. When my blood was low, he was like, give, give her mine. You know, and the, do the doctors were like, no, we can't do that. It's a procedure. Okay. But I really thank God that I don't know. For every bad thing, there was something great. So it's hard to remember the toughest and the great because every day to me, has both. This guy makes me laugh, at the same time he makes me angry. So, balance. Well, first of all, like I've explained our story, our marriage, first of all, Carol became my friend first. And uh, when she became my friend, we, we ended up getting married. So here I was, enjoying a very good companionship. And, this is the type of a lady who can spend a whole day with and even a whole night with and you still won't get tired. So I looked at it. We are very fresh in Paris. I, first, I didn't want to be widowed. Uh, is it there? Widowed at the very early years. I didn't want to lose my friendship. I really couldn't imagine taking care of I mean, seeing Carol going into a casket and going into, I was determined to fight because if I am a man, you know, us men we like being heroes. And I want to be, first of all, hero for my own wife. So I was determined to fight if I was in, using a gun up to the last bullet. Financially, I was determined to fight up to the last coin. I was determined, I remember there several times I used to go and say a prayer and my prayer would be, Lord God, let your will be done. But I'll be like, even if she does not make it, but at least I have to make sure that I fight to the very end. And I think there are some decisions I made. I can't even say it was in my power because up to now, I had some people coming to me and telling me, you, are you crazy? I mean, you are the breadwinner. Because like in my family, mm, majorly I was contributing a lot of school fees for the children, for my step and for my brother's children and that kind of thing. And then I was having some projects I was overseeing. And now they were like, if you decide to go to India for a transplant, what if you don't come back? I remember some of my company partners, executives, sat me down and said, you know, you're the sole signatory of this, whatever. Now, we have to change you, we have to remove it, just in case. And that one, somewhere, somehow, brought in some fear, because the way they were mentioning it, they made it look like you may make it or you may not make it. And I remember even me, by the time I was making that decision, that last night, before I went into the operation room. You know, they, they, they call it preparation. They clean you and they do all this, and then they tell you stop eating. I remember I was with my laptop and I edited my will. When I was writing that will, I was like handing over, knowing that, ah, what comes in. Uh, I sent that will by email to my lawyer. I just in case I don't make it it's going to be like this. So when I came out of that hospital and I, I read through that will and checked all that, I realized that it wasn't me. 
some power came over me and I boldly made this decision. And I'm glad to be here. It was a nice decision. Every single day I look at this woman, and she makes me happy. I'm like, I don't regret even one inch of that decision. Mm. I don't know. I shouldn't answer this. I'll answer this from my family point of view. My family point of view, even if they're watching this on TV, none of them had the courage to come and face me off. But they were not comfortable with the idea. They were not. Because they were like, uh, what is going to happen? How about all the other people you've been taking care of? Uh, they were like, how about the relatives of Caroline? Because initially, she went to look for a sibling or a close relation to give her a kid. And she, the people came up. It is true, one of the brothers came up, he was diagnosed with TV, he couldn't donate. Another one came up, they said, you're too young. The mother came up, they said, you're too old. Some people came up. So in the end, I told my wife, but I think tomorrow let's go, they tried me. And when they tried me, everything was perfect. Everything was matching. I was like, okay, so if it is matching. I did my, 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 my background check. Is it possible that someone who is not close in nature can give it like an organ? And they said, yeah, it is okay. Then uh, I inquired. Is it possible that you can live on one kidney? They said it is okay. So the moment I got all this information, I went to my relatives and I told them, I'm going to give a kidney to my wife. Well, they didn't talk to me directly, but they kept they started asking me the same questions I've already I already had answers. How about the relatives? I told them the relatives are trained, they do not have it. Then they, they asked me, how about the business? I told them, with, with Carol in the hospital, even the business was going down because every single day we are spending an equivalent of $100 per day on just the dialysis and the maintenance, the hospital fees alone. And that was a bit huge. Whichever way it was taking down, not only the business, it was taking down the whole family. Everything was now about us. I remember. All churches which knew us, including um, God Center, they were all standing, they even declared fast and prayer for us. Everything, every resource, every prayer was directed towards us. So somewhere, somehow, we had to also focus on getting the solution. Uh, but on the side of Carol's family, it was a wonderful family. They were a great support. Because they're the ones who normally organize fundraising activities because they had a lot of fundraising to be able to raise the money. Because here is the scenario. When we say we are going to India for a kidney transplant, husband and wife, that was hard on number one, we had jumped. We had found an organ, it was perfect. But by that time, the hundred dollar per day I mentioned all the money we had, we didn't have money for the transplant. So, what is more interesting is God, God caused a situation of that nature to touch people's hearts. Anyone who would be here, our story would simply say, You know what? I'm going to give you $200. Do you have an account? Someone imagine calling you from another province. They've not met you, but they've heard your story, maybe like the way you're watching us on TV. Maybe they will, they, some will hear it on the radio, some will read it in the newspaper because our story went viral. In the newspaper, in the radio, on TV, and they, they will just simply donate. They will look at you and say, you know what? Let me just help this couple. Let me help this couple come. So, it, it was... Uh, for me, uh, the fact that, first of all, I was very far away from my relatives and I was a man I had decided no, no influence at all, no one influenced me, not even Carol, Carol did not even approach me because she knew I was the breadwinner, I was not even sending the medicine for dialysis and all that, but here I had come and said, you know what, we have to get 
at the end of this, yeah, no one could stop me. Yeah, no one could because I just said my decision and it was fine. Even if they would come, they say you have to do this. We have we are changing the signing power. They say no problem. I'm ready. Change the signing powers, but I'm going to do it. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Well, I don't wait for Valentine's Day. I let him know every day. I want him to know it every day. He's a gift to me. He's a gift to me. He reminds me of the love Christ was talking about. You know, because I still don't understand why he did it. I do not understand it. I've asked him, he has never answered. I don't know, but I don't get him. I don't understand him. He's different, but I'm positive that he loves me. Well, love one another. Uh, there's no thing which can defeat. Just let me start with a couple. If you stood back to back, whatever challenge is going to come, if you just stood back to back, you can overcome anything. Because two are better than one. I've seen many people, they opt for a route out of a relationship, of a marriage, just because a simple challenge has come, a simple conflict has come. You have to resolve all conflicts. I'll tell you, I'm a direct opposite of my beautiful wife. I love motorbikes. She's not so much into them, but sometimes for the sake of love, she jumps onto that bike and rides with me. I mean, it's love. Love will defeat battles. Love will make you cross oceans. Love will make you overcome all these uh, hurdles in life. And it's going to be life. And it's going to be a worthy road. Uh, walked if you walk it together with your partner because you stand to give a testimony and there's someone cheering, there's someone saying, Yes, that is that. That's my life. So, Valentine's is a lovely day, but it's important to celebrate it on a daily basis. Don't wait for 14th December to celebrate. Oh! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, 14 what? Feb. Celebrate um, the love you have for your children, for your mates, for your parents. Celebrate it every day. Because that's a gift God has given to all of us. Okay, you are alive, celebrate it. Valentine's, get your red colors and wear them. Okay? We're marching, come on, baby sugar. We're going to the promised land.